Hi guys, welcome to the notes video for lesson 6.5. This is trig word problems part two. So last week we did some word problems with angles of elevation and angles of depression. Um, this week we're going to work on some trig word problems that have bearings in them. So that's a new concept for this week, a bearing. And a bearing is just um, an angle that's measured from clockwise from due north. So clockwise is important from due north. And bearings are sometimes used in navigation, like um, boat navigation or planes, plane trajectories. Um, they might use a bearing so that they're all orienting their angles the same way and their trajectories the same way. Okay, so um, as an example, so here's like our compass basically, and at the top we have north, at the bottom is south, and then to the right is east, and to the left is west. I don't know, I learned uh, never eat shredded wheat to remember that. Whatever acronym you use is good. Okay. So say uh, you are traveling like here. So let's say that's your path. Your bearing would be this angle. So this angle clockwise from north. So clockwise is the way a clock, the hands on a clock turn and they turn, um, they go to the right first. So it goes north to east, that's clockwise. Um, so that green angle is going to be your bearing. Okay, that's all you need to know about bearings. Um, so in this video, we'll do one example, and then I've got two more examples in the second video. Okay, so town B is 200 miles directly north of town A. Town C is directly east of town B. Okay, so first, let's start by putting town A, town B, and town C on our map. So I've kind of like given you a little map here. We need to put our towns on it. So let's see. Let's start with town A in the middle. So it's always good to put one of your towns on the origin, that middle point. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you use. Some choices might be easier than others, but it will work for anyone that you choose. Um, for this one, I'm going to put A in the middle. And then we learned that town B is directly north of town A. So from A, I'm going to go straight north, and somewhere up here is town B. So I'm just going to put a dot there for town B. OK. And then we had town C is directly east of town B. So if I'm at town B, I want to go straight east, and somewhere out here, somewhere along this line, will be town C. So I'm just going to pick a place. So there's town C, and it's directly east of B. OK. A plane flies 600 miles directly from town A to town C. What is the bearing of the plane? Okay, so we have town A to town B. We also have a plane going from A to C. And then if we draw the line from B to C, we get a nice little triangle. So that's helpful um, because that lets us use trigonometry. Okay, so now let's follow our word problem process where we go through, we use the information to label our diagram, and then we're gonna write an equation. So I'm gonna read through again this time highlighting important information. So first, town B is 200 miles north of town A. So we have the 200 miles. OK, so where is that on our diagram? Town B to town A is this leg here. So that's my blue leg. And that, we know, is 200 miles. OK, 
town C is directly east of town B. That helped us draw. Um, a plane flies 600 miles directly from town A to town C. So there's another piece of information. So it's 600 miles from A to C. So A to C is this leg right here. So that we know is 600. All right, what was the bearing of the plane? So this is what we're looking for. What was the bearing? Okay, um, we know that bearings are angles. So when I assign it a variable, I'm gonna give it the variable theta for an angle. And the bearing is the angle measured from north. So here's north, clockwise to my plane, that's gonna be my bearing. North clockwise to the plane, so there's theta. Okay, now we're just in 6.3 territory where we're just solving for a missing angle. So to solve for missing angles, we wanna think about which sides do we have, which trig ratio should we use, and then we're gonna write an equation. So for theta, I've got the adjacent side, that's my 200, and I have the hypotenuse because that's across from the 90, right? Okay, so think to yourself, which trig ratio uses adjacent and hypotenuse? And hopefully we come up with cosine. So cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so let's use that to write our equation. So cosine theta we leave theta as a variable because we don't know it, equals the adjacent side, which is 200, over the hypotenuse, which was 600. Okay, so we now need to solve this equation for theta. And to do that, we need to get rid of cosine. So remember, we get rid of cosine by using its inverse. So I'm gonna do cosine inverse to both sides here. So cosine inverse of cosine, Oop, that's a really bad theta. There we go. Equals cosine inverse of 200 over 600. Okay. And this is helpful because Cosine inverse and cosine cancel each other out. So on the left side of this equation, all I have remaining is theta. I've got theta by itself. Okay, then this guy we just need to put into our calculators to figure out what that number is. So remember, we do that by first doing 200 divided by 600. Put that calculator into our fraction. Okay, we get 0.3 repeating, so we get that big long decimal. Leave the decimal in there, hit second, and then cosine inverse. Okay, and if you do that, you should get 70.528. So I want to round to two decimal places. Since my third decimal is 8, that means I bump the second decimal up, so I'm going to get 70.53. This is an angle, so my units are degrees, and that is my answer. So the bearing of the plane was 70.53 degrees. All right, that's it for our notes video. You can check out the examples video for two more examples, or you can head on to the check for understanding.